Hi, my name is Eleanor Tatum, and I'm the publisher and editor-in-chief of the New York Amsterdam News. The coronavirus crisis has brought serious distress to local economies and advertising along with them. The New York Amsterdam News has partnered with the local media association during this unprecedented crisis. Help us continue our important work in chronicling the life of black New Yorkers and consider making a donation to the COVID-19 local news fund today. Go to givebutter.com slash Amsterdam News. Again, that is G-I-V-E-B-U-T-T-E-R dot com slash Amsterdam News. Thank you and stay safe. It's Thursday, August 7th, and welcome to the New York Amsterdam News Podcast. I'm Cyril Josh Barker. On this week's episode, my guest is NYPD Commissioner Dermot Shea. In a recent interview, he spoke with me about several issues, including the protests against police, the recent spike in violence in the city, and police community relations. Well, in the wake of the George Floyd police killing, there have been a number of protests against police departments over the treatment of black citizens. Residents, community members, and elected officials have been challenging the NYPD over allegations of unequal treatment of African Americans. Numerous killings over the years of unarmed African Americans and videos of police using excessive force are fanning the flames. At the same time, the NYPD is dealing with the recent spike in violence across the city. Numbers indicate that shootings so far this year have surpassed the number of shootings in 2019. And we welcome you to this episode of our podcast. And we're so pleased to have been able to speak with NYPD Commissioner Dermot Shea. Uh, I recently met up with him to talk about a lot of issues that are plaguing the city right now when it comes to crime and law enforcement. And I was able to ask him a lot of questions that are on some on a lot of people's minds uh, when it comes to policing. And we're going to have that interview here for you in a few moments. Well, it is Thursday and the paper did come out today. And I have several stories that I want to go over with you. Our front page story this week is about the U.S. Census. During the spread of COVID-19, census response has been low and enumerators are going to start going door to door to get a more accurate count. We also highlight how the Trump administration is attempting to prevent communities of color from filling out the census. We also continue our coverage of how COVID-19 is impacting the upcoming school year. Major questions are now arising over whether or not parents will even send their children back to class, even if experts say that it's safe. School school districts across the state, including New York City, are putting forth their plans for resuming some form of school next month. However, Governor Andrew Cuomo said that he has not heard from parents about how they feel. We hear from several education advocates on the issues as families prepare to send their children back to class. And lastly, in our arts and entertainment section, we take a look at Beyonce's Black is King visual album now streaming on Disney+. Plus. Our arts and entertainment writer Jordana Elizabeth describes it as an Afrofuturistic sensory experience that is draped over music that swirls, pumps, and inspires dreamscapes of a mystical African reality. And I have yet to see Black is King yet. And after hearing that, I'm definitely going to be reading uh, Jordana's article about Black is King and definitely be taking a look at it real soon. Well, you can check these stories out and more by picking up the newspaper on newsstands. All we ask is that you do it safely. Or you can go online to AmsterdamNews.com to check out all these stories. Well, my guest this week is NYPD Commissioner Dermot Shea. I met with him in Harlem to discuss several issues concerning law enforcement and the rise of violence in the city. Well, first, thank you so much for meeting me today out here uh, in St. Nicholas Park. Uh, Commissioner Shea, uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing real good. It's uh, my favorite time of day. I love the early mornings. The city comes to life. You hear it. You know, you see people coming out, working out here. So just glad, uh, glad to get together today. All right. Well, thank you so much. Well, my first question for you, you know, there are a lot of issues going on concerning the NYPD. And uh, one of those issues is community police relations uh, that is affecting especially the African-American community. A lot of people in the African-American community feel that the police department is, is, is unbiased about some, some things in enforcement. Well, what's your response to that? Yeah, I think the, it's probably the most important issue. Um, it's at the heart of everything that we think about. Um, building trust with the community. I think this is not unique to the New York City Police Department. It's, it's really a law enforcement issue across the country. You see that with the incident of George Floyd and everything that's come out of that recently. But right here in New York City, right now with me as the police commissioner, I can tell you that it is a critical, critical issue that we are uh, really devoted to, to improving community relations. I do think that at times the relations aren't as bad as some people will make them out to be. Um, but that's not to say that we, we don't recognize that we have to get better. 
Um, and I think it's, it can't be a unit within the NYPD that's responsible for community relations. It's got to be felt throughout the entire department, from me down to, down to the bottom. And, and uh, that's our goal. That's something that we're striving to work towards. Um, I, I think I have, uh, you know, really tremendous men and women that I'm so proud of that work in this agency. Um, but we know we have to get better too, uh, you know, and it's, it's every day, every minute throughout New York City, from one end to the other, uh, every interaction is how we, how, how we move towards that. And that's, you know, from the day I was sworn in, that's the message I tried to um, instill in my cops and, and, and civilians that every interaction, to you it's just another interaction, to the person on the other end, it's the most critical th uh, time maybe that they'll ever deal with a New York City police officer. And how do you want them to remember that? And, and that's kind of my philosophy. Uh, there's a lot of work to do, but I am confident, I am really confident that the men and women of this department, together with community members working together, um, cooler heads prevailing, I think we're, we have an opportunity right now and I'm excited about it. All right. Thank you so much. And another question I wanted to ask you about was that there is a lot of conversation going on. There's a lot of news coverage going on about federal police coming into New York City. Uh, as you know, we do have a rise in violence going on right now, which I will talk about in a few minutes. But I do want to ask you, what do you think about that? Are there federal agents going to be coming to New York City similar to what we're seeing in Portland and some other parts of the country? Yeah, and it's important here to, to differentiate. Um, I think what you're referring to, what we saw in Portland last week with um, federal agents being moved in to protect buildings, I've gone on the record. I, I, we have a very robust police department here, um, 54,000, 55,000 uh, in strength. We have the resources to do, um, you know, protect the, the buildings, protect people, serve people. I don't think we need any uh, influx of federal officers in. That's, that's what I've said publicly. Um, with that being said, though, um, we work hand in hand with federal officers, whether it's the Drug Enforcement Agency or the FBI or other agencies on task forces as a normal course of doing business. Um, you mentioned the violence, trying to be really targeted and, and protecting New Yorkers. But uh, that's that's two different sides of the equation there. But in terms of, you know, dealing with protests and things, we would prefer that uh, let the NYPD handle it. We're trained. We know the community. Uh, and I think we have it under control. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, there's been a recent spike of violence in the city. We're, we're seeing it on across the city in all parts, from Brooklyn to the Bronx to right here in Harlem, where we are right now. Um, what are your feelings about it? You know, there are a lot of people in the community who are really stepping up, for one. A lot of our community organizations are out there doing, you know, what they need to do to curb the violence and stop the violence. But what are your feelings about the rise in violence? What do you think is the cause? I think it's a lot, of, a lot of different factors. It really, truly is. I, I've said, uh, I've mentioned a perfect storm. It's, it's, you know, the year that we're having and turning people's lives upside down. How exactly that translates, that's tough to put your finger on, but it's a factor. When you look at, uh, you know, court systems, when you look at cops pulled away to do protests, when you look at, um, you know, uh, laws that have been passed. I think it's all, it's all of this. It, it, it's honestly, and you'll read in papers and people will point fingers and sometimes with agendas, listen, this is, this is the hand that we've been dealt. What's, what's important to me right now is look where we were a year ago, two years ago. We had gotten shootings in this city down to unprecedented levels. And we've done it at the same time that we've had the lowest incarceration in New York City in, in memory. And that's the, the golden formula that we want to recapture and build on. I think uh, we can keep violence down surgically, um, going after just people that carry guns, etc. cetera. Um, but if we have too few people in jail, that's a problem too. Uh, I think that with data, working with prosecutors, working with community organizations, we're gonna get it back. We're gonna get, you know, I've seen glimmers where, where we still have a lot of struggles right now, but I've seen uh, some real quality investigations by our detective bureau, closing shootings. I wish one didn't happen. Um, we need the community's help. That's why tonight in the Bronx we're going to be doing a town hall, just reminding people we can't do this alone. We're going to be there to protect you. We're going to be running towards the danger, but we need you too. We need you to cooperate. We need you to take part in juries. We need you to work with us. 
And that's the trust that we started with. So uh, I'm confident we're going to get it back. We are not going backwards in this city. Uh, as, I, as I'm the police commissioner, I'm not going to allow it. It's too important, and we can't have lives destroyed by gun violence. But we got to do it right. We can't police neighborhoods. We got to do it with the communities. We, we saw the tragic shooting of a one-year-old child in Brooklyn, uh, and, a, a, and also not just that, but we also saw some tragic deaths and shootings uh, involving minors, people under the age of 18. Uh, of course, everyone's life is important. Everyone's life is, uh, is precious, uh, but our youth are especially being affected by this. What, what is the NYPD doing to make sure that we can stop those incidents from happening to anybody? Yeah, and we're doing a lot, and you, and you said something so, so important there. You know, everyone here is a one-year-old child, and, and that goes without saying. Like, how can that happen in 2020 in New York City? But I'll go a different direction. Uh, you know, we've had 16-year-old kids shot, and sometimes they're gang members, but that's still a 16-year-old kid. You know, whether they're in a gang and whether they have a criminal record or not, like, we can't do better than that, than saving kids. Uh, I refuse to say we can't. Uh, we, we had a case this week with three kids... 16, 16, and 17 arrested for gunpoint robberies. Uh, we got to be hard on crime. We got to keep people safe. But we also can't throw a 16 year old kid away that did something stupid and say the rest of his life is ruined. So, how do we bring all that together? We are going to be um, policing this city, as I think we have, trying to do it smartly with the community, reforming. We don't always, we always you know, try to keep people safe. Sometimes we do it in ways that annoy people, to be honest. So we've recognized that. That's why we've been reforming a lot of our practices over the last six, seven years. But we have to continue to be transparent, have honest discussions, not just have closed meetings with poli police. Pull the community into that and say, what are we doing well? What are we doing that we need to do differently? We also have to have honest conversations about many of our partners and different government agencies. Hey. We need your help on different issues, but if we, if we continue to think like that, if we continue to strive to get better, to get safer, um, I have absolutely no doubt that we can um, drive crime back down, do it in a way that keeps the fewest possible people in jail, because I don't think that's, you know, we, we throw somebody in jail and they get out. We got to make sure that when they get out that we haven't created something worse, too. So how do we do all that with all the other issues at probably the most difficult time in any of our lives? Um, more important than ever that we need each other. All right. And, of course, you, you do know that there is a movement right now uh, to defund the police. In fact, the mayor announced yeah. that he wants to uh, move a billion dollars away from the NYPD and uh, give it to other services, youth services specifically. What's your reaction to that? What's your response to that? How do you feel? I think, uh, you know, cooler heads have to prevail here. If you look at today's New York Post, I happened to glance at it as I was uh, walking here, and the front cover had defund the police, and then it said fund the police. I believe, my personal opinion, that um, people in this city, people of color in this city, I believe this because I've had the conversation with them, they want to be safe, and they want police in their neighborhoods. They don't want less police. They tend to want more police. That's my opinion. I could be wrong. Um, but they don't want to be policed. They want fairness. They want to be respected. They want the cops not to pull up onto the block and jump out and arrest someone, because they want that, too, when it's right. They want the cops to pull up on the block, get out, and talk to people. And I think that that is critical that we remember that, too. That's our neighborhood policing philosophy. But defund the police um, first you have to say what is it what it, what does it even mean because different people refer to different things taking some money from the police and giving it to other agencies well I, I came out on the record and said I will take money from our budget and restore money to youth programs because I think that's critical so in that respect I actually agree with it but um, I think it was a mistake some of the some of the budget cuts but I also recognize that we're in unprecedented times and tough decisions have to be made. Um, you know, we'll, we'll get to a right place. If we have to add cops, I'm sure that the city government will add cops. Um, but we got to make sure that we're using all our resources wisely and most efficiently at the same time, too. Are the police involved in things that maybe they shouldn't have to? I think there's no doubt about that. When you look at homelessness, 
you know, we've recently been taken out of the homelessness business. Um, I don't think that's a bad idea, but as long as people aren't going to stand for people with mental illness or dangerous or people setting up encampments either. So somebody, we have to all come together as city government, work together and make sure that people of this city are, are receiving the services that they deserve and need. There are a lot of nonprofit organizations uh, here in the city, in our communities, like Man Up Inc. in Brooklyn, Harlem Mother's Say right here in, in, in Harlem, uh, and Street Corner Resources, which is actually not far from here. Uh, all these organizations, some of them are doing outdoor uh, Occupy the Corners, which I don't know if you've heard of that. They're you know, literally going out there and occupying street corners to curb violence. What do you think about those organizations and the work that they're doing? Uh, obviously, there's, there's a need there, but what do you think about them? I don't think that alone is going to stop the violence, but I think that's a great thing that that's occurring. The more people get involved, the work that they do, incredible. Because it, it's not just the police, everything that we say, it's not just the police, you need the community members, you need credible people that, I don't care if it's me, if it's my cop, or if it's a school teacher, a social worker, or somebody from Cure Violence. Let's reach the people. Let's have hard discussions. Let's have honest discussions. Let's try to save as many people as we can. Um, so as far as people uh, getting involved, occupying corners, um, trying to stop violence, let's go. Not only you do it, let's get more people doing it. Because the more people that are marching, speaking up, taking part in the process, telling people we're not going to stand for this anymore. We want safety in our communities. We, we want kids playing in this park, not people shooting guns. I think it's nothing but positive. There have been uh, a lot of protests going on, not just here in New York City, but throughout the country uh, in the aftermath of the George Floyd police killing in Minneapolis. Uh, and this is stemming, these protests are stemming from long time uh, issues between the police and the African American community. Um, there are a lot of black people, I'm a, I'm a 37 year old black man myself. There are a lot of people that look like me, that are younger than me, and even older than me who feel that if we see a police officer, we might want to, you know, ease up a little bit, you know, or, or, or proceed with caution or walk carefully because there is a culture within the black community that says, be careful around police because you don't know what's going to happen. First of all, let me get your reaction to the protests. What do you, what do you think about the protests that are going on? Uh, you know, uh, May 28th, right? That, that's May 25th, I think, is, is when the George Floyd incident occurred, the murder. Um, the 28th, that, that month, uh, maybe we'll look back or I'll look back on that one time from now and, and, you know, wow, we were all a part of history. I think it was a moment in time um, when the protests, you look at how much um, across this entire country, the world spread to. But let's worry about the country in New York City for right now. Um, I think it galvanized people. It galvanized people around such an important issue that's often talked about, um, but this was different, I think. And I think people recognize that, you know, there's been marches before, but never such a period like right now where it was such uh, emotion, it was sustained, like I, I don't think it has been probably since maybe the 60s. Uh, and and you, when you look at what has come out of it already in terms of discussions, laws passed, um, I think it's all a positive. I, I think that, um, you know, I'll tell you about within the police department, we, we are a minority majority department. And just within our police department, speaking to employees that some I know, some I didn't know, 55,000 at the time, we were down a little bit, but employees, I didn't know all of them, but emails to me you know what, come to my office and talk, and now face-to-face -face discussions and hard discussions, and repeating basically what you just said. People saying, even within our agency, here's what we think should be done differently, um, and telling their story. I, I think that that's all positive, but I think that we're not done. I, I think that um, ultimately people have to turn discussions and marches and civil disobedience into something positive at the end. And I think that's happening, but I think it's incumbent upon, you know, all of us. I don't think this, 
this may be controversial. I don't think so. I don't think this was all about law enforcement. I think it was more about um, hundreds of years of um, oppression, injustice, inequality across a spectrum of not just law enforcement, housing, health care, education. And, and if, if we can look back at this, or if your kids and my kids can look back at this 50 years from now and say, how could, remember that? How could it have been like that now? Look at the world now, I think we'd be in a better place. Thank you so much. And my last question for you is, um, what is your message to black New Yorkers in the black community? Uh, you know, again, I just said that there's a there's a culture within the black community, especially among our young men, about police and commu police relations. What is your message to black New Yorkers about the NYPD? Well, that's a sh that's not a short answer, okay. but I'll try. Um, number one, we are your police department. Number two. I'm not naive and shying away from um, real, not just perceived problems, real problems. Um, but let's fix them. And, and the NYPD, I commit, is going to do our part to fix them. It's not an overnight. It's, it's, this is long term. This is roll up your sleeves and stop talking and do things. But let's do it together. And that's, that's how I think that we... Um, need to need to approach this um we we have we are an imperfect police department but at the same time i'm really proud of our police department we 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 support reform we want to continue to make new york city the safest police department in the world but i've said this many times we keeping crime down is one issue we can't keep crime down by going into neighborhoods and then the neighborhoods that we're protecting feel that they don't like the police. Let's get to the better place where we do it with the community. And I think that's all of our goal. Well, listen, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Shea, for meeting with me today. And uh, thank you for your words. It has been 100% my pleasure. Let's do it again. Thank you. All right, thank you. That concludes this week's podcast. You can pick up the latest edition of the New York Amsterdam News on newsstands and get updates online at amsterdamnews.com. You can also keep up with us on Facebook at NY Amsterdam News and follow us on Twitter at NY Am News. I'm Cyril Josh Barker. Thanks for listening. Hi, my name is Eleanor Tatum, and I'm the publisher and editor-in-chief of the New York Amsterdam News. The coronavirus crisis has brought serious distress to local economies and advertising along with them. The New York Amsterdam News has partnered with the Local Media Association during this unprecedented crisis. Help us continue our important work in chronicling the life of Black New Yorkers and consider making a donation to the COVID-19 Local News Fund today. Go to givebutter.com slash Amsterdam News. Again, that is G-I-V-E-B-U-T-T-E-R dot com slash Amsterdam News. Thank you and stay safe.